everyone, the message you are about to watch is a message preached by Bishop Opu Deli Ese. This message is packed full. It's that it is anointed, it is fire right, it is loaded, and it has the capacity to put you on your throne of enthronement. I want to encourage you as you watch this message, watch it with faith in your heart, because God will impart some great measure of anointing in your life. Yokes will be broken, chains will be destroyed, walls will crumble as you watch this message. I want you to watch it with faith in your heart and trust God that every situation in your life will turn around for good in the name of Jesus. Amen. Happy New Year. Discovering the purpose of the world, the prophetic ministry. Number one, the prophetic exists to review the secrets and the sins in the unbeliever's heart with an expectation of reconciling him to God. I said, the, <laughs> praise the Lord. I said, the prophetic exists to reveal the secrets and the sins in the unbeliever's heart with an expectation of reconciling him to God. Did you get it? The prophetic exists to reveal the secrets and the sins in the unbeliever's heart with an expectation of reconciling him to God. Friends, a prophet. Now, if you say you are a prophet here, or you have prophetic anointing, and your gift is not saving sinners, that gift is questionable. You didn't hear what I said. If you say you are a prophet, major prophet, eh? you know, a prophet is a passion sharer with God. He shares the burden of God. And the burden of God is that a soul should not die. Rather, they should be redeemed so that they, you know, they will repackage to go to the heaven. Malachi said something. He said, when the Elijah will come, Elijah will reconcile the hearts of the sons back to the father. So the prophetic ministry is the reconciliatory ministry. So each time the prophetic manifests, the, 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 the sinners must be reconciled to the heart of their loving father. But the kind of prophetic I see today is the one that devalues people's value and makes them to live abundantly in sin. That is not the prophecy of the scripture. Hello! If you're a prophet, now, okay, imagine John chapter 4. If Jesus came to the well, saw a woman, the woman, for thou has had, for thou has married five husbands. Say truly, sir. Even the one you are living now is not your husband. The woman screamed, hey, she left and ran. I've seen a ghost today. Oh. He went, she went into the city. She said, come and see a man who has told me everything. Is he not the Messiah? The flow of the prophetic triggered a genuine consciousness for repentance. She went into the city and gathered the men. You know, she has a way around men. She gathered what? The men of the city had anointing. Anointing for all. This woman has money five. Ah, yeah, da, 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 da. She has what? Men. Amen. She entered into the city and gathered the men, and the men followed. As they have followed before. <laughs> and when they got that, they saw Jesus. They said, Woman, we didn't only hear what we have seen today is greater than what a revival broke out in Samaria. So the prophetic ministry. Is a reconciliatory ministry. If you're a prophet, you don't make other calls. You don't leave people. God doesn't tell you about the sins of people. Reconsider the kind of prophet you are. B, the prophetic can change people's hearts and ignite them to trust God for their visitation. Now, for the scripture for the first point I meant is 1 Corinthians 14, 24 and 25. It says, But if all prophesy, and there come in one that believeth not, or one on land, he is convinced of all. Remember, he didn't say he is condemned. I told you the Holy Spirit does not condemn. He does what? He convicts. And the Bible has a confirmation to that. So he is what? Convinced of all. He is judge of all. And those are the secrets of his hand made manifest. And so falling down on his face, he will worship God and report that God is in you of a truth. That God is where? The God you carry, how will people know it? They will know it by proofs. By what? Tangible proofs. Acts Apost uh, no, uh, 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 Acts 2.22. Say so Jesus, uh, uh, Jesus Christ, the Son of God from Nazareth, 
who has been approved before you in signs and wonder. His ministry was approved because consistency of power was being emitted from his ministry. Don't be a pastor every day you give us to now and And there's no proof. Let me tell somebody, go and look for power. So stand, check someone, say, look for power, wait for power. Power ministry. And purity is the price for what? Power. Purity. 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 You can stage manage it, but it will not last. You can stay, but you will know what? Very soon, I gain your boogie very soon. It will find out. When you now go, some prophets, before they come to the man's church, they go and pick people's phone number, collect their addresses, send their spies to, to come and interview. He you know, himself from a on a ministry. Some prophets operate by divination and by information. They combine the two. Some of them, let, let me give you their style. If you invite them, by, let's welcome great prophet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They knock. They carry. I'm going to show you two keys. I know them now. Two. Number one, when they come to your church, you invite them. They will not tell you. Their agents are there. Some of their boys are already there. So walk around, shake five persons, ask him his name. And what? As in what? So by that time they do, their angels have moved. As you say your name, they take it and write it in a sheet and keep. Now when the man of God start ministering, hello. Now they will now pass it under a white handkerchief and give to him. Including the one they have gotten a week they visited your church. I am telling you the truth. So they will miss all the information and put it and carry it to the pulpit. And the man of God, you know, uh, who is who is uh, on the nature of the camera in this house? And from the information that their 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 district has got, to, they can now profess. You know, some of them are they have sophistication in iniquity, sophistication in what in iniquity. So as a sharp man, they can be able to do one or two things, and. Yes. Am I blessing you? So these are the things you need to know. The, the church is in trouble. So, it's an error that must be checkmated. A lot of things. By the time I start sharing on the perils of the prophetic. The word? The perils of the prophetic. That is why if you are leaders, you have be sharp. Some of you that work in the protocol department. Are you know what I'm saying? If you pick your pastor's guest, discuss nothing with him. Keep quiet. If you are a protocol officer in your church and you pick a guest from the airport, discuss nothing, say nothing. Some of them that are wise say, ah, so you are a protocol in this church. How is your church now? If you are a protocol officer, people that go to the airport to bring guests, do not say anything until it is required. There is something the invited guests will ask. Take it, sir. When we get to the church, talk to the man of God. Talk to our pastor. Praise the Lord. No matter what I said, the prophetic can change people's hand and ignite faith to trust God for that visitation. When somebody's case is mentioned and the anointing handles it, faith blossoms and miracles happen. Praise the Lord. The genuine prophetic also helps one to prepare for unforeseen challenges and development. The prophetic can help one to prepare, to be aware of unforeseen challenges and development. The world we are living in is, in, is full of uh, 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 manipulations, attacks, and all that. Restoration, it is for what? Preservation. The prophetic power of God has the ability to restore wasted years. And I stand to prophesy to every man of God, to every ministry here, every lost opportunity, every lost members, every lost content and divine help that you have have that will have taken your ministry to the next level. If you say amen, go and restore them. The prophetic has capacity to restore. Praise the Lord. Now the word restore. Praise the Lord. So we have two connotations to the meaning of the word restore. 
one part, one shade of the definition of the word is to bring back that which was lost. Another one is to give you more than what was not what in existence. Talking about Job in, in Job 42 verse 10 to 12. Say, and God restored to Job all more than bigger than what he lost. Praise the Lord. So, both the one you lost and the one you didn't lose, God is missing them and giving back to you. If you believe in rest your feet and shed a better amen. God is a restorer. The prophetic is what? A re See, I don't care how bad your ministry is. By a release of one prophetic word, your glory can burst. By the time you get back to your ministry, I stand in my office as God's oracle. Whatsoever the devil has taken from you shall be restored negatively in the name of Jesus. If you believe in let me hear that amen like a thunder. He said, by the hand of the prophet, the children of Israel were delivered. And by the hand of the prophet, they were all preserved. I remember the story of the missing ass head. Some pastors have lost their ass head. Now the ass head talks about authority. It equally talks about skillfulness in delivery. Some people that have lost their sharpness. And the Bible said, if an ass loses its sharpness, that more energy is what required. That is why there is so much sweat and, uh, and, 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 and restlessness in some ministries because the ass head is either blood or the ass head has been lost. But I prophesy to you today, I don't know the sea where the devil has buried your ass head. As you say amen, that ass head will manifest. I'm not hearing that amen like a warrior. Can we corrupt that amen like fire? He said, where did he fail? He said, this place. If, uh, if you are, now listen to me. Most times, prophets, you shouldn't be uh, uh, surprised that most people, that most of times, people that have problems comes around you. Let me tell you something. 70% of the functionality of the oil is to restore what Satan has taken. So, it's one part of the prophetic restoration and preservation. Every prophet must know that you carry a restoration and preservation word. You form a covering over the people you, you, you shepherd. Am I communicating here? Praise the Lord. I say praise the Lord. F. The prophetic ends in the unveiling of the revelation of the word of God. The prophetic ends helps in the unveiling of the revelation of the word of God. The oil of the prophetic brings clarity to the visions of God through his word. The anointing of the prophetic gives you an unusual access in decoding the mysteries of God. Revelation chapter 1 verse 10, John said, For I was in the lost spirit, then I had a voice. Praise the Lord. So the anointing of the prophetic or a heavy dosage of high concentration of God's presence around you can be able to help you to gain clarity in the world. Like I said yesterday, I said the scripture is not literature. If you want to assess the blessing of the scripture, then you must be a man whose spirit has been illumined. You must be a man whose spirit has been inspired. There is a spirit that must come upon you, an ocean that must come upon you for you to be able to assess the deeper depths, the inner innest of the hidden glory of God embedded in his word. Am I talking here? So the prophetic can do that. Number what now? Seven. The prophetic is a tool for national revival. The prophetic is a tool for national revival. The triggering of the prophetic unction has capacity to bring national repentance on a wider scale. When you enter into a city and you begin to manifest the gift of word of knowledge or the gift of word of wisdom, people's hearts and their sins are converted and they bow their knees to the Lord Jesus and I tell you, great flow of forgiveness and repentance will flow. So if you are praying for revival, either in your church, if you are praying for revival, either in the city, the prophetic is one tool in the hand of a pastor to trigger it off. Someone shout, amen. 
8. The prophetic is a source of conviction. It's a source of conviction that brings the sense of the presence of God. The presence or the immediacy of God. The prophetic ministry is a source of conviction that brings the sense of the presence of God. Each time God communicates to a people through the vehicle of the prophetic, it creates closeness. It, it, it creates proximity to the throne of grace. One more thing I want to show you. Praise the Lord. Number nine. The prophetic is a weapon for spiritual warfare. The prophetic is a weapon for spiritual warfare. Now, prophecies are not instruments of decorations. Prophecies are instruments of warfare. And of course, if you lose your warfare, definitely you have lost your welfare. I saw a scripture in 1 Timothy 1 verse 18. This charge I commit unto thee, son Timothy, according to the word, prophecies, can we cross it like a mass choir? One, two, go. This charge I commit unto thee, son Timothy, according to the prophecies which went before on thee, that thou by them mightest war a good warfare. Praise the Lord. So the prophetic oil can prepare you for warfare for you to, in order to have what God has already prepared for you. Number 10, prophetic ministry is a tool for signs, wonders. Prophetic ministry is a platform for signs, wonders, and miracles. The sick and oppressed can get back their healing and deliverance. The sick and the oppressed can get back their healing and deliverance through prophetic interventions and manifestation. Prophetic ministry is a platform for signs, wonders, and miracles. The sick and the oppressed can get back their healing and deliverance through prophetic intervention and word manifestation. We saw the case of Neman. We saw the case of Neman. This man was plagued with leprosy, but it was the interplay of the prophetic anointing that cleansed him up and restored him. Now, subtitle, The Perils of the Prophetic Ministry. The perils of the prophetic ministry. By the word perils, we mean the dangers, the pressures, and the pitfalls you must avoid in order to vendor a mature prophetic ministry. The perils of the prophetic ministry. There are likely pressures and pitfalls that must be avoided and handled in order to maximize the fullness of the blessings that are accrues to the prophetic ministry. You know, when God's people begin to recognize a prophetic anointing upon a man, upon a ministry, there are temptations that will arise. Praise the Lord. There are what? A wise man said, when a problem is well stated, that problem is half solved. So we're going to be looking at the likely pressures, temptation that might come upon a man that God uses. You know, many people were not tempted when they were starting. They were tempted when the glory has come, when the glory has landed. And we need to know what to do in order not to tamper with the glory. One thing that God will not do is to contend with you concerning his glory. He said, for my spirit shall not contend with man. Am I communicating here? So when the glory grows and the nation the state, people begin to recognize clearly that the hand of God is upon your life. You prophesy, it comes to pass, you pray, things happen. You know, everybody's like singing your song. Then that is the time to become extremely world. So we're going to be looking at the temptations that, must, that might come to you as a man of God, a leader who flow or who is a part of this prophetic company. Are you ready? Number one, hero worship. Hero worship. Hero worship. Hero worship or hero worshiping, whichever way you want to put it, praise the Lord. This is an occasion. This is an occasion of consistency 
This is an occasion of consistency in the accuracy of prophecy and prediction. And people begin to adore and worship the vessel instead of the God that uses the vessel. This is an occasion because of consistency and the accuracy of prophecy and prediction and prediction and then people begin to adore people begin to worship the vessel instead of God who flows through the vessel praise the lord now listen to me when men testify and call your name and try to heap the glory on you if you're a wise servant you should remove your head and take the glory to the lord now, if you are not disciplined in this, then you are signing in for your death warrant. Anywhere God contends with the glory, that is where shame will soon replace. If God notices that you are now enjoying this thing too much, ah, I came to this ministry, the man of God came and prophesied, he's too much, he's powerful. Yes, people, because they have not been tutored, can say anything. But you, the man of God, God is watching your reaction. God is watching your heart. Now, what the person has said is not really the problem, but your reaction to what was said. And to show God that you don't have power. Now, listen to me. If God takes off his power from you, you can't heal a headache. You can't do what? There is no, he said, without me, you can do what? Nothing. It's not by power, it's not by mind, but by my word, spirit. So, you should learn when, big, when, when the fruits of blessing begin to come to your ministry, you must know that, after all, like when the Jesus was riding upon the donkey, the donkey should be wise to know that the glory that was coming was not coming because of him, but because of the one driving him. Did you hear what I said? So if he wants the glory to continue, he should keep being the donkey he is and let Jesus keep on riding to the glory. So this aspect is, I've seen a, a, lot, a whole lot of powerful ministries. A great man of God in this nation whose name I will not mention. But you know, this is what I'm talking about now, entered, entered, and the ministry is nowhere to be found. The ministry is nowhere to be found. I'm talking to somebody. You need to have an attitude of remaining humble when God uses you. You start prophesying, you start praying for people, things begin to happen. Yes, the flesh won't see it. So let this people know no, no, I'm anointed. I, I'm telling them I'm anointed. They don't want to know. So let them hear it now, hear it very well. You know, your flesh wants to prove a point. But when God is involved, he doesn't want to prove any point. He's the beginning and the end. With him, there is no variableness or shadow of turning. Are you hearing what I'm saying? He's not in competition with any person. Am I talking here? So number one peril of the prophetic is hero world worshiping. God taught me earlier on. Hey, prophet, you prophesy. This one happened. Tumor disappear. Cancer disappear. I'll be hearing it all, but I'll close my heart. I'll do what? Because if this thing drops into you, somehow it will germinate. And when it starts germinating, you begin to react from the overflow of its intoxication. You know it can intoxicate. So every pastor should avoid that. If God uses you to touch somebody, just give him all the glory. Whatever you celebrate naturally multiplies. Praise the Lord. Is that number one thing that we must avoid in the prophetic Two, over-reliance on prophecy for personal guidance. Over-reliance on prophecy for personal guidance. Over-reliance on prophecy for personal guidance. A whole lot of us, we raise a prophetic church that is full of spiritual babes. Somebody wants to dress up in the morning, call, he puts a call across, say, hey, Papa, I have before me now a white, white, white shirt and black skirt. What is the Lord saying? Well, should I wear a yellow one or black God is too big to concern himself with trivial matters. With what? Hello, are you hearing what I'm saying? God is too what? Like I said before, man is tripartite. Man is what? Man is trion in configuration. Man is a spirit that lives in a body and it has a soul. First Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 23 will give you this account. Now with the spirit, we make contact with the spirit realm. Jesus said, for the hour has come for those that worship me to worship me in truth and in spirit. So with the spirit, we connect to our maker. Then the soul is the seat of intellect. We have capacity for decision making in the soul. 
and the body will contact the five cells realm. Now, that God gave us the Holy Ghost, he didn't withdraw the mind. Oh my God. God can talk to your spirit and can as well talk to your mind. Every creative work you see on the earth is overflow of men whose minds we are developed. So, the prophetic should not be there to be guiding you in the minute details of life. Yes, God speaks. He is not a talkative, he is a communicator. But there are some things he has given us, our mind to do what? Fish out. Am I talking here? Most prophets make the mistake of every little thing. Maybe a, a rat passes here now. They want to look at the rat prophetically. They want to look at that word. When a member comes into the house and saw, and saw red oil. Come, come, let us, let me hear what God. And listen to me. If you are still at this level, you are a baby prophet. Because the familiar spirit can, can kill you. Hello? If they pour something on your neighbor's door, tell your neighbor to pour something. To do what? Oh my God. Did you hear what I said? If they pour something on your neighbor's door, tell your neighbor, you don't need to hear from God. Do what? What will you pour? For we have a better covenant in the blood of Jesus. Why? Because this covenant speaks better things than the blood of Abel. So carry the blood and pour. When they went to, in Matthew 21, when they went to untie that donkey, Jesus said to them, if any man say, thou shalt say. So if any of your member comes to you and say, Papa, that woman said I will die in seven days. You say, wait, wait, what thing happened to your mouth? Hello? He said, by the words of your man shall a man be justified. Am I talking here? So if they say something, you should say something. Let mystery handle mystery. Miss fire with fire. So many one of us who have not been too in the prophetic, we begin to look for spiritual meaning for all those things. No. Because this is one of the quickest ways to open up your prophetic ministry to the dominance of familiar spirit. Straight spirit. Praise the Lord. You don't use the prophetic to run your everyday life. The word of God is the constitution of the kingdom. Everything you need for normal living can be gleaned from the faces of the scripture. Praise the Lord. Every good promise of God can be gleaned from the scripture. Everything you need, apart from the thoughts says the word of God, you can glean it from the word of God and live by it. Am I communicating here? Three, avoid the pressure of giving a prophetic word when you are not permitted to release it. Avoid the pressure of giving a prophetic word when you are not permitted to give it. Prophets, you should know, pastors, evangelists, prophetic company, you should know that it is not every prophecy that God gives to you that you are permitted to release. Did you hear what I said? Let me say it again. Apostles, evangelists, men of God, you should be able to know that it is not every word or revelation that God gives to you is meant to be communicated or to be what? Revealed. Many a times, God talks to you on a personal ground in order to warn you of an impending danger or to protect you from what? Disaster. So, so some of us who have not been cooked and matured in the prophetic we say everything we see. Praise the Lord. Most of the times, God allows us to know those things to guide our relationship with you. To guide what? There are things that must not be said. Until God says, it's time to do what? Say it. It's one maturity that every man that flows in the prophetic dream and revelation must be able to know. Praise the Lord. Every prophet must learn to reveal what God is revealing. And keep what God has commanded to be kept. Praise the Lord. That is maturity on your own side. That is the reflection that you've been tutored. That is the reflection that God is on your side. Shall I hear you? Four, avoid the pressure. Avoid the pressure of wanting to minister on the platform with microphone in your hand. Without adequate preparation. Avoid it. God will first make a man before he manifests a man. And I said in course of our teachings here that God does not manifest greatness hurriedly. 
Now, manifestation is the last phase of God's dealing with us. What God enjoys doing with us is to mature us, is to prepare us, is to anoint us, so that when opportunity meets with preparation, it will equal explosion. Am I communicating here? Both of us, last night you saw a dream, yesterday you called a revelation, now you are, you are printing complimentary card, looking for who to invite you to do what? Minister. Prophetic ministry is bigger than thus says the Lord. Prophetic ministry is bigger than going to where we are prophesying to people, identifying their problem. No, that is just one percent of the prophetic ministry. In course of all we've been teaching, you see that this is an, you know, it, it, the, the, the department is very enlarged. Praise the Lord. So you should wait for your banking. I talked about the welcoming mantle and the commissioning mantle. Most prophets are operating with the welcoming mantle. The mantle that just signifies that God has called you to assume a responsibility in the prophetic. And when you go off without adequate preparation, you will shipwreck the ministry and cause the body of Christ a great harm. Praise the Lord. A lot of people have come into churches and gave prophecies that divided the church. And gave prophecies that closed churches. And gave prophecies that, that joined the head of the government with the church. Because of a so-called prophet. Praise the Lord. Let me tell somebody, wait to be released. I'm not hearing you. Talking about Jotan, 2 Chronicles 27 verse 6 says, So Jotan became mighty because he prepared his ways before his Lord, his God. Be prepared. Praise the Lord. You cannot underestimate the place of what? Preparation. You cannot underestimate the place of what? preparation. When God matures you, when God prepares you, there is no altar that will be too high for you to function. And when you minister, people get blessed. Now, what I'm trying to say, the body of Christ is beginning to recognize that there is something unique about this one. But it didn't start like this. You get what I'm saying? Now, I am now operating in my refined stage. When it is raw, it is not appreciated. But when it is refined, the world will beat a pathway to your destiny. I prophesy, by the time you leave this conference, what you carry will find expression. I say the anointing you carry will explode. I see your generation singing a new song because of you. If you are the one I'm talking to, rest of it and shut fire. Number five, avoid the pressure of giving soulish prophecies. Avoid the pressure of giving soulish prophecies because there is a need in your ministry. Did you hear what I said? Pastors, we need to be careful. Avoid the pressure of giving soulish prophecies because there is a need in your ministry to be met. Many prophets and prophetic people always bow to the pressure of giving a prophetic word, especially in the face of challenges. Many prophets and prophetic people always bow to the pressure of giving a prophetic word, especially in the face of challenges or pressing need. A church has a need, a pastor has a need, and you think that the only way that God could reach out to you and minister to you is for you to fabricate something and release it in the name of the Lord. Some people say, thus says the Lord, whereas actually they want to say, thus says my belly. Did you hear what I said? No matter the pressure, sir, God is God. Where God commands, he provides. When you do God's work, God's way, you won't like God's provision. It is in God's assignment he commands his consignment. Are you hearing what I'm saying? God forbid me by covenant that I talk to somebody because I need money. And if I need money, I know how to get money from God. For what he cannot do does not exist. Say, it is I that give it the power. Now, that word power is an empowerment, creative revelation on how to create that which does not exist. Am I talking here? Many of us here, because we have a need of one million in our ministry, say two million in our ministry, we now begin to do some things that no, it ought not to be so. I call it soulish prophecy. Now, if you say what God didn't say, then you confirm it yourself. You didn't hear what I said. Should I say it again? 
If you say what God didn't say, you do what? Let's say, if you say what God didn't say, you do what? This is where a lot of sound prophetic ministries have short-circuited the fluidity of the oil of God upon their life because they began to corrupt the oil. The oil can be genuine, but it can be corrupted. Am I complicated here? Don't prophesy out of pressure because you have a need. If God is saying to you anything, say for this prophet ran, but I didn't do what I didn't say them. He said they prophesy, but I didn't do what speak to them. You must hear. You must be doubly sure that whatever you are doing, you are doing by the inspiration of the Almighty. Someone shout, Amen. Amen. Very, very important. I'm telling you the temptations you must avoid as a prophet or as an apostle, even in science and wonders ministry. You must avoid soulish oppressions. Soul, soul, fleshly induced, carnality at its peak. It's very, it could be very, very destructive. Praise the Lord. Let, me, let us take one, then we, we, we go over for the next section. Praise the Lord. Six, the pride of sources. The pride of sources. All of us know that when a man is proud, it is no longer the devil that will fight you. When you are proud, you have become God's word. He said, I will resist the proud and then I will give grace to the humble. No matter what God is doing in your ministry, please be what? Humble. One of the weakest ways to lose the functionality and the fluidity and the power of your unction is to be what? Proud. God cannot use a proud man you must be meek, even though I'm not talking about being weak. You must be what? Meek. You know, a man can be meek without being weak. Hello. You know, you can be humble without being humiliated. So, you must be meek. Now, meekness is a, a factor that continually brings the homes of flow of revelation from the heart of God. Any man, the Bible says, and Moses was the one, the meekest man. And God talking about Moses said, there is no prophet that has arisen from the land of Israel that was stronger than one because of one meekness. Most of us don't know that a servant, a pastor is the chief servant. You are what? That is kind of leadership that we have inherited from Christ. Not being in the plumb positions, not being in the, in, in the front lines. Let everybody notice us. He's the papa of the house. He's the mama of the house. The Alpha and Omega of the church. No. Be in the place where you serve. Humble yourself. Serve the Lord with meekness. How many of you know that I'm serving you? How many of you know that? A pastor should serve. And your lifting in life comes from the threshold of effective service. Someone shout, wow. Let me take one more. One more and I'll end. Praise the Lord. Embarrassment of failure or mistake. Embarrassment of failure or mistake is another fear that encaptures or enraptures people who operate in the prophetic. Now hear me. There is no true prophet today that have never made a mistake before. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Hello. Now I'm going to encourage you. Most people are now trying to change their title because they think they have made mistakes in the, in the miraculous or in the, in, the, in the prophetic. Now, most prophets called by God are not trying to wound their ministry, are not trying to cover the glory of the ministry because they made one mistake somewhere. No, 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 no. If you made mistake, go back, confess yourself, go back and try again. Hello. Go back and do what? When Samuel missed it in the house of David, did he throw in his prophetic mantle? Uh, talk to me. When someone missed it, did he throw it? Did, did he uh, resign from prophetic office? But he continued. And first someone three twenty two told us that none of his word failed. But we saw a day that he, his word nearly fell. Oh my God! Am I talking to here? Are we talking about Elijah? Second Kings three. Elijah's prophecy failed. Elijah told the king, "Go and fight battle. You will win them." But they went and they lost the battle. Hello. Oh my. Hello. God said the people of Israel will stay in land in 400. But they came out for the four, 430 years. If you ask, wouldn't, wouldn't you say that he didn't meet accuracy? Hello. Talk to me. <laughs> wouldn't you say he didn't hit accuracy? Because what God told us is 400. 
If anything happened and 30 years was added, it's not our problem. The true God that cannot lie, say 400. What did he say? What do you say? 400. So why did you make it 430? <laughs> <laughs> Sit down. So I am saying this to encourage you in the prophetic. It, 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 it's, it's a ministry that you need the heart of a lion. The heart word. You know, I, I, I'm, I'm, not mean, I'm not, you know, trying to say when you are a false prophet. Though. If you are false, that one you need deliverance. And it's deliverance from the root. You know, when a man's root is faulty, his fruit will be questionable. Yes, sir. I'm not talking about being false. I'm talking about being a genuine vessel of God, but in moments you didn't get it correctly. Most of you, one, knows you missed it. Even the people you talk to will not know that you missed it. Because when you come, the Holy Ghost will not say, my son, you know that thing you told that lady? I didn't mean three days. I, I wanted to say... 30 days, but you say three days. But if you kneel down, God will now cover you and correct it. I am telling you this because this is what I know. Praise the Lord. Somebody said, does it mean that the Holy Spirit makes mistakes? Now, when you make mistakes, it's not the Holy Spirit making Holy Spirit is perfect. But he's speaking through infinite object. We have the ten, ten, the ten things of the depravity of my, man's mind. At times, the overflow of the emotion beclouds the sense of our thinking. So even when the pure God is talking, our impure mind obstructs it. Are you know what I'm saying? God, no, no, no. God is always what? Perfect. But the vessel through which he communicates is not what? Perfect. So that is why we, we talk like this kind of conference right now. We are sharpening one another. I'm opening your eyes so that you see by the time you live here, you see how accurate your word will be. Because you have sat under an environment that has a rich prophetic oil and culture. Have I blessed you today? Put your hand together for the Lord. I believe you've been blessed by that word of enthronement that came your way. Suddenly in my heart, I believe that your life will never be the same again. In case you are out there, you don't know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. Quickly, I would like you to chant this prayer. Say, dear Lord Jesus. Dear Lord Jesus. I come to you. I come to you. A sinner. A sinner. I confess. I confess. From today. From today. I receive you. I receive into you. Into my life. Into my life. As my Lord. As my Lord. My personal Savior. My personal Savior. Never to sin again. Never to sin again. Congratulations. Amen. You are now sanctified, blood bought anointed for exploit. Amen. I want to speak specially to those who listen to the word of God. I declare by the mercies of God yes. that every yoke of limitation in your life is broken. Amen. I speak that the land where you are will not deny you your treasure. Amen. I declare when it is your time to be blessed, it will not be negotiated. Amen. I decree by the mystery of the word of God, yes. may you have access to divine inheritance. Amen. I declare healing to your body. Amen. I declare fruitfulness to everybody's situation. Amen. Receive grace for financial empowerment. Amen. Go and excel. Amen. Subdue the land. Amen. Manifest dominion. Amen. In the name of the Father. Amen. And of the Son. Amen. And of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Thank you for watching the message of enthronement. And I believe that miracles are already happening in your life right Hallelujah. now. Hallelujah. I want to encourage you to follow us on Facebook and on other social platforms. You can see the links scrolling on your screen right now. And the headquarters of the church is located at Zion Heritage and Miracle Ministries of Voice of Nigeria Way, Lugwe Airport Road, Abuja. And we have uh, so many other branches. The branches and their addresses will also be scrolling on your screens right now. So stay connected with us and remain lifted for life.